on the banks of the Blue Nile River in Ethiopia, a project more than a decade in the making has just been completed. It's a concrete giant, nearly two kilometers long and 145 meters high, and it has created a reservoir larger than Greater London. This is the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, or GERD, Africa's largest hydroelectric project, officially inaugurated on September 9, 2025. For Ethiopia, this $5 billion dam is more than just a source of power. It's a symbol of national pride and a cornerstone of its economic future. But for its downstream neighbors, Egypt and Sudan, it's a source of deep anxiety, sparking a decade-long dispute over the world's longest river. So what did it take for Ethiopia to build this monumental structure? And what does its completion mean for the future of this vital region? The primary motivation behind the GERD is Ethiopia's urgent need for electricity. With a rapidly growing population of over 120 million, nearly half the country has historically lacked reliable access to power. The dam is set to more than double Ethiopia's electricity generation, with a massive capacity of 5,150 megawatts. This new power is intended to light up homes, schools, and hospitals, and fuel the country's ambition to transform from a farming economy into an industrial hub. Beyond its borders, Ethiopia plans to export surplus electricity to its neighbors, projecting over a billion dollars in annual revenue. Perhaps the most remarkable part of this story is how the dam was paid for. After failing to secure international funding, Ethiopia turned to its own people. The vast majority of the project was financed domestically. The government sold bonds that ordinary citizens, from farmers to students to those living abroad, eagerly purchased. Public sector workers even contributed portions of their salaries. This unique crowdsourcing effort fostered an incredible sense of national ownership and unity around the project, which began construction in 2011 and involved over 25,000 people. But as Ethiopia celebrated, its downstream neighbors watched with concern. Egypt, a nation of over 100 million people, depends on the Nile for about 90% of its fresh water. Cairo has long viewed the dam as a potential existential threat, fearing that Ethiopia could restrict the river's flow, especially during times of drought. Egypt points to colonial-era treaties that granted it a majority share of the Nile's water, but Ethiopia, which was not a party to those agreements, rejects them. Sudan's position is more complex. Geographically caught in the middle, it shares Egypt's worries about water security. However, Sudan also stands to benefit from the GERD. The dam could help manage the devastating annual floods of the Blue Nile and provide Sudan with cheap, reliable electricity. In fact, there is already evidence that the dam has helped control overflow at one of Sudan's own dams downstream. For over a decade, the three countries have been locked in negotiations, often mediated by the African Union, but have failed to reach a legally binding agreement on how the dam should be filled and operated in the long term. Egypt and Sudan have consistently called for a binding deal, while Ethiopia has proceeded with filling the dam's vast reservoir, which was completed in late 2024 and is now known as Lake of Dawn. Ethiopian officials, including Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed, have repeatedly stated that the dam is not intended to harm any downstream nations, framing it as a shared opportunity for regional development. So far, independent research has shown no major disruptions to the Nile's flow, partly due to favorable rainfall during the multi-year filling process. The inauguration of the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam marks a new reality in the Nile Basin. The dam is no longer a plan or a construction site. It is a functioning powerhouse. 
the conversation has now shifted from preventing its completion to managing its operation. The critical question that remains is whether these three nations can move from a decade of dispute to a new era of cooperation. Finding a way to collaboratively manage the precious waters of the Nile will determine the future stability and prosperity of the entire region.